I am Mary Jane Minkin, and I'm an obstetrician gynecologist from New Haven, Connecticut. And Dr. Minkin is at the North American Menopause Society, and we are talking here at the annual meeting. And this morning you gave a talk on... We had a nice, fun-filled breakfast session. Uh, we were talking about sexuality, intimacy, and menopause issues and cancer survivors. And tell me a little bit about what you discussed this morning. Okay, well, cancer survivors are a very important group of women. A group of men, too, but certainly for women. And as when I started getting interested, I realized there were, I was dealing with a lot more patients who I'm sorry to say had had cancer, but these women um, were, were surviving and leading normal lives, but unfortunately many of their lives had been hormonally disrupted by either stopping hormone therapy or having gone through chemotherapy or radiation, which pushed them into menopause. And unfortunately, some of the therapies for menopausal symptoms are somewhat controversial um, in women who are cancer survivors. So you can't take estrogen when you have certain kinds of cancer. Exactly. Certain kinds of cancers, it's a problem. Many kinds, actually, it is not. And that's probably the first thing to mention. That Which there are... cancers are you not likely to get uh, estrogen or other kinds of hormones? Well, the major cancers that people have questions are breast cancer. That's obviously the major group of women who have issues with taking hormone replacement therapy. For example, if somebody's had different kinds of lymphomas or uh, in intestinal cancers, things like that, these women are reason quite reasonable candidates for hormone therapy. But unfortunately, breast cancer survivors in general, there's some controversy. So for breast cancer survivors, what are you uh, offering them to consider? Well, there are some very easy non medical interventions. I mean, certainly if somebody's getting hot flashes, lifestyle management, keeping rooms cold, layered clothing, avoiding known triggers, things like alcohol, spicy foods, hot coffee, things like that. Um, that's one approach. So there. lifestyle things can make a big difference. Make a big difference for a lot of women, and some people that's all they need. For women who need more intervention than that, one remedy that I've had very good luck with is Remy Femin, which is a German product, which is black cohosh. However, the reason that I recommend that as opposed to a general black cohosh is that in Germany many of the products are sort of, uh, they have some special techniques of preparation, what they call an isopropanolic extraction process, and they're very m closely regulated, which sometimes is not the case here. So the German product's been around for 50 years. It's been actually well used in German breast cancer clinics. They use it quite widely over there with very good relief of hot flashes, um, and that it also um, it helps hot flashes and actually seems to be not harmful at all, it may actually be helpful to their tumors, so this is good. Um, and it's very helpful. There is some controversy. Soy is certainly a substance that's been used by many women. Some oncologists do have a problem with it. Um, some people are absolutely fine with it. Um, I tend to think it's probably quite fine for my ladies, but I always encourage them to discuss it with their oncologists. So if they take soy, would you recommend that they do it as a supplement or recommend it as food? How do you recommend I always recommend soy foods if they can. I think that they do better taking the soy food. Unfortunately, many women in this country aren't big on soy products, uh, but if they can do it as a food, I prefer it that way. Other products and other things that could be helpful for breast cancer survivors? As far as um, hot flashes or as far as other symptoms that they may get? Well, we were talking about intimacy, but uh, whatever symptoms that... Well, intimacy is a huge issue, and fortunately there are some very good over-the-counter products which are non-hormonal, which can be used. Uh, for example, a product like Replens, which is a long-acting moisturizer, is quite helpful for a lot of ladies. You can get it at the local pharmacy over the counter. If you are having some problems with vaginal irritation along with dryness, another product made by that same company called Refresh is a very good product. Over the counter, totally reasonable, no controversy at all. Of course, at the time of intercourse, I do recommend that my patients use a lubricant as well. Uh, and there are many good products out there. A uh, product like Wet or the Replens people have a Silky Replens, Silky Smooth, which seems to be helpful. So I think there's a lot of good products out there that women can use. And for, just quickly, um, for hot flashes and for breast cancer patients. 
for women who have tried soy products or women who've tried a Remy Femin who still need further intervention, we have many products which are quite reasonable. There's actually a new prescription product called Brisdel, which is a very low dose of paroxetine, which is very good for hot flashes. Um, low doses of other antidepressants like SSRIs or SNRIs can be very helpful. And another product which we use quite regularly is a product like Gabapentin, which actually does help someone with hot flashes. So these are all possibilities in women who are not allowed to take estrogen therapy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Seibel.